All right, guys. So in a video I did not so long ago, I talked about five things I never, or five EDC items I never leave my home without. But I wanted to take this one a little bit further and talk about um, five EDC items, or actually I think six EDC items that are helpful for survival situations. Now, obviously in most EDC settings and circumstances, you don't necessarily need to be exactly fully prepared for a full blown out wilderness survival circumstance or situation. But here are a few different tools that are useful for e for survival situations and can help get you out of a quick pinch. Now, obviously you should still also have things in a place like a vehicle or a truck for more dedicated survival. And that's what I have, you know, with things like a full on dedicated, you know, rain shell jacket, survival knives, saws, uh, hatchets, axes, you know, like full blown tools, shelter systems that will help you in a more serious type of situation. But here are a few things that you can easily carry on your body just about every day uh, that are really helpful for survival. So the first one for me, so the first one for me and one that was higher on my list for five things that I never leave home without is a simple lighter. Now lighters come in many different uh, forms and fashions. This of course is a very simple old fashioned uh, Zippo lighter and uh, I've carried this thing for going on 10 years now. And uh, about the only thing that I really do to help it uh, go a little bit longer is, you know, I put a rubber band or a ranger band over it, but I really do like these um, Zippos. Now, of course, uh, if you are carrying a Zippo lighter, you do need to keep in mind that you got to keep it topped off, but it's not too hard. You got to do that. I mean, if you smoke, you have to do it more, but since I do not smoke, I just uh, top this thing off about once a month. And with this little Ranger band that helps keep the seal a little bit better so it doesn't lose um, lighter fluid as much. So anyways, that is the lighter. And once again, a lighter will help you start fires and, you know, fires, especially now that it's winter, is a very nice thing for staying warm because it is chilly outside. So this is the first one and I think a no-brainer. And once again, looking at how tiny a lighter is, super easy to throw this in a pocket or a pouch and forget all about it. But at the same time, very useful. You could also substitute it with things like ferrocerium rods, which would be equally as easy to carry on body. And so long as you have a good striker like a knife, you can strike that and start fires. However, for me, I like to have a lighter because lighters are are a little bit easier because they actually have a flame so you can start things on fire either easier or use some tinders that you cannot start on fire with a ferrocerium rod. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be a paracord bracelet. And paracord bracelets, I know they were very vogue and trendy, you know, five to 10 years ago, but these still aren't a half bad idea, especially if you do live in a climate or condition like Alaska. Once again, a bracelet is super easy to throw on your wrist and forget all about. Um, you know, it can even take the place or take the form of something like an Apple watch band. So it can take the place of things that you're already using. And the nice thing, of course, about a paracord bracelet or band is the fact that you have that cordage, that 550 cord that you can turn around and use for survival purposes. So that is very handy. And of course, you wanna try to aim for, if you are gonna carry a bracelet, a weave that has a higher um, inch per foot of paracord um, or per foot inch of paracord in the weave. So something like this guy, this is I think a Bane's cuff, if I remember correctly, design. And so this one has quite a bit of paracord in its design. So it is a pretty practical survival bracelet. So that is another one. Um, another very handy tool, of course, is going to be the flashlight. And flashlight evolution has been really awesome over the course of the last handful of years. I think like the last five years, flashlights have really kicked off. And you know, something like this, uh, this is an EC, or sorry, E35 uh, flashlight from Phoenix. And this guy that pretty much fits in your hand, you know, it is a little bit thicker, but pretty much fits in your hand like so can fire off over 3,000 or right at 3,000 lumens of light. So you have an incredibly bright flashlight. And, you know, some people may say you do not need that much light. And certainly, uh, you know, having 100, 120 lumens for um, just normal 
everyday carry use is nice. But when we're talking about survival, whether that be self-defense or what I think more of if you're out in, say, a large field like what's right behind me and it's pitch black, you need to be able to throw a lot of light a good distance. And so, you know, for most EDC applications being outdoors, you don't necessarily need all 3000 lumens, but the reason why I try to encourage more powerful flashlights is two reasons. And really that is once or once again, you know, um, you don't know where you're going to be. It might be nice to be able to throw a beam of light, you know, over a 500 foot or 600 foot, you know, field to be able to see the other end or maybe to see a road that can be helpful. But even if you don't do it for that reason, these bigger flashlights or higher output flashlights almost always have higher battery or run times at lower lumens. So if I just power this guy on at this lower lumen, you know, um, range, Range, you know, this is going to be practical and totally useful for just about every daily use. But at the same time, too, I'm going to get a very long run time. You know, we're talking over a day of being straight on at this light output. So that's why I try to encourage higher output flashlights. And um, they're good in a pinch. And once again, they just last longer if you do need them for an extended duration. Now, what kind of goes hand in hand with electronics and tech is a really good battery bank. And something like this, while this guy may be a little bit bigger, this Goal Zero, um, this is like a Flip 36, I believe. And so this guy's a little bit bigger, but this is a 10,000 milliamp battery um, bank, but still easily fits in a cargo pocket. And depending on how much you're using technology, whether that be phones, flashlights, um, anything like that, having something like a 10,000 milliamp battery bank is not a half bad idea because it really keeps those things running and when you have things like flashlights phones those can make or break your survival odds even though especially in places like alaska you know phone service may not be the best having the option to be able to make a phone call or you know do something that can help you in the event of a survival situation may make or break the situation Next one up, of course, and it's probably, um, we're not necessarily ranking these in any order, but a really sturdy folding knife or fixed blade for that matter. Something like, uh, this is a Strider SMG, so probably not the best example, but still a pretty tough, pretty durable blade. Um, this is one of my outdoor folder go-tos, but um, really nice, uh, but ultimately what you want is just a knife that is going to be strong, that is going to be capable, that's going to be able to do a wide variety of tasks, whether you need to, you know, use it for harvesting natural resources, feathering sticks, doing some light batoning. Once again, you know, kind of putting an emphasis on fire creation and shelter creation, uh, because those are going to be two of your biggest things in survival. So making sure you have a knife, some cordage, some you know, a way to start a fire like a lighter are going to be really big ways to increase your survivability just practically because most of us do wear appropriate clothing, um, you know, when we're going out into the environment. Like I am wearing winter gear appropriate to the temperatures outside. So, you know, even if I don't have something like a, a thermal blanket um, or a mylar blanket, it's going to still be, I'm still going to have some time and some ability to, so long as I can create a fire, create a shelter, uh, you know, even a down and dirty shelter, um, still going to be able to retain enough heat to survive for a short duration of time. Okay, last one up on the list is going to be a firearm. Now, the reason why this one's the last one up on the list is it's probably the least necessary because a firearm doesn't necessarily exactly help you survive in any direct way. However, of course, in self-defense, very useful. And also in survival, it can be very useful. Now, this is a Glock 19 in 9 mil, And so you do kind of have to weigh what your EDC handgun is going to be for caliber. Obviously, if you're carrying something like a 10 mil, it's not going to be the most practical to shoot small game with, but I have indeed shot and harvested uh, grouse with a 9mm Glock 19. It was actually not this one, unfortunately, but my previous Glock 19, but same, you know, barrel length, same caliber, same basic firearm as this. And so, once again, you will have some meat loss, but as kind of a survival, um, like kind of survival training, I try to, you know, go out and say, hey, is this actual handgun viable for this? And so once again, you will have some meat loss if you shoot something like a grouse with a nine mil, especially if you're carrying something like a plus P hollow point in it, which is what I shot the grouse with, I believe. I think it was a, 
a plus P hollow point. It might have been a plus P extreme penetrator, but once again, I was trying to, you know, not just recklessly shoot animals, but I was trying to see proof of concept. Can you actually, you know, reasonably harvest an animal with something like a Glock 19 if you find yourself, heaven forbid, in that type of situation? And once again, some people may say, you know, why would you be carrying this out in the wild? It's not necessarily that I carry this handgun out in the wild, but if for whatever reason I found myself outdoors, needed to survive, needed to harvest game animals, something like a Glock 19 can do it. And uh, yeah, it can, once again, not the best, but it is an option. So ultimately going back to it, firearms are not necessarily a survival critical uh, piece of equipment, but if you do need to harvest game animals, uh, there really is no better way than a firearm. They are really effective at uh, harvesting, especially small game. So, so long as you're carrying something like a nine mil, um, you know, do expect some meat loss on small game, but you know, getting some meat out of an animal, being able to get the breasts, the, uh, you know, kind of um, drumsticks are, it's going to, it will be able to do that for you. And so it is practical. So anyways, those are some of my survival essentials for everyday carry. Once again, these are things that are reasonably easy, if not very easy to carry on your body every day that do really help with survival situations. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and...